We're coming to the next talk of the DSpace Praxis Treffen 2022, the integrated management of project funding and research data, the experience of Boris Portal from University of Bern. With me, I have Zumi and Ricardo. Thanks for your presentation. The stage is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk about our project, Paris Portal. Um, my name, as already mentioned, is Sumi Sontaram. I work at the Open Science team at the University Library of Bern. And today I'm going to present with Ricardo Fazio from uh, For Science. He's a project manager there and our main point of contact for this project. I will be starting with some background information on what exactly Boris Portal is about. And in the second part, Ricardo will be talking about some implement implementation that have been customized for our repository. So here you can see the services um, we pro provide. Um, for the University of Bern members. And I won't be getting into much details about all of them, but apart from the open access support and research data management support, you can see that we have three icons, the Boris publications, the Boris thesis and the Boris portal icon, which seem to be very similar. Um, Boris is shortened for Boris uh, Burn Open Repository and Information System. And in this next slide, it will clarify the reason for it. So Boris Portal here in this um, graph is um, the institutional repository which uses DSpace and at the moment, um, only contains research project funding and research data information. However, we do also have Boris publications and Boris thesis using ePrints. In the near future, it is our goal to integrate Boris publications and Boris thesis into Boris portal to then only have one main platform for all the research information. So um, we work with DSpace version five for Boris Portal and we went live September last year. So it's not that far away. <laughs> there are two applications for Boris Portal in our case. Um, for one, the publication of project and funding information was a requirement from the Wise Rectorate Research of the University of Bern. So they are one of our project partners since they are interested in having a collection of those information to have an overview of the current projects at the University of Bern. Another project partner is the clinical trial unit of the Inselspital Bern which is the University Hospital of Bern. The clinical trial unit part is, was mostly interested in the research data repository part. So now um, I won't be go, going into much details of the project and funding information, what we do have for the submission, all the metadata and so on since this is probably something you already know a lot about. Um, but I would like to go into the research data item aspect of Boris Portal briefly. So it is our institutional research data repository of the University of Bern, where you can publish research data and or metadata as well as supplementary documents such as codebooks and so on. Um, you can make the research data item citable. We have a DOI and we also have the Creative Commons 
licenses. Um, yeah, and it meets the requirements of the most important funder according to the fair data principles. And I think yesterday we also had a similar um, talk about managing the access of research data. So this is this will be kind of similar. Um, in our case, which is special or in our case, we do have this thing that we do not allow users to upload sensitive data. However, it is possible to upload metadata and its associated documents and a data transfer agreement. Here you can see um, a little bit more about this managing the data access part. Um, it is, uh, we have four access types, open, embargoed, restricted, and closed. And this is, you can put this on every data file, uh, file you upload into Boris portal. So before I, uh, hand over to Ricardo, who will be talking a little bit more in detail about those upload steps. Um, I would like to mention a few things we would like to tackle in the future. Um, it is planned to work on the integration of Boris Portal into the credit opening process, which is like an internal process at the university um, that would make it easier for the researcher to not have to submit the same information to the repository and for opening a credit. Then we would also like to build interfaces to the database, databases of the research funders, such like the uh, Swiss National Science Foundation. And of course, we would also like to improve on and the overview of research activities, of faculties, institute centers, and individuals. And as already mentioned before, uh, we are also working on the migration of the Boris publications, so on from ePrints to DSpace. And of course, lastly, also working on and talking about the migration process to DSpace 7. Now, please, um, Ricardo, you can okay. take over. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I would like to, we have a lot of work done with collaboration with the University of Bern staff. And uh, I would like to present um, four, uh, the four issues for requests that we uh, that, that we implemented uh, in the in the repository. The first one is, as Sumi said, is about the upload step. Uh, because in uh, we had the, um, the the requirement to uh, to uh, to to upload the obviously for for the research data submission we have to upload obviously the the the, the file for the, the the data for the from the uh, from the data sets that more or less you, we can say the uh, common files that is, is uploaded in the in every submission then the data transfer agreement and other supplementary file we decided to create a, a, to implement and extend the upload step with uh, three forms that allows the researcher to upload each type of uh, bit stream. And each type of bit stream is saved in, uh, in a specific bundle. Uh, the, also, as you may see from the table, the availability of the, of the, of the uploading of, the, of each bundle is based on the value of the, the metadata uh, on the metadata access rights that is defined during the submission. Uh, 
um, okay, we can go, uh, this can go, okay, thank you. Also in the, uh, we uh, also we up, uh, we added the managing of Creative Commons like Creative Common license for each bitstream um, that the, the Creative Common uh, is saved as a specific metadata for the for each uh, for each bitstream instead of having only one uh, Creative Common license for the entire item. Actually, in the submission, you have uh, also the a metadata to apply the Creative Common license for to the whole item, and this is also used to as a let's say a default for the a default value for the submitted uh, for the uploaded bit streams that uh, that the user will will uh, will upload that the submitter will upload. And then obviously you can go into the file list and um, change the license from, from there. Uh, I think we can go over. Thank you. Uh, also, we, from, um, we had uh, another requirement to let the people easily upload uh, documents about funding and projects. Uh, as Sumi mentioned, we Boris Portal is on this space five, so in, in this space Chris five. So in this space Chris five, there is still a, 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 the, the item and the other entities are still different objects, these the different type of objects uh, in respect of the, the space seven. So um, we uh, we implemented a, a, the creation of funding and projects in as a submission style, let's say, is to, to ease the, to make the, 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 the submitter life easier. And also we, uh, from the, at the end of the submission of the funding of a project, a new entity, a new object is created, is in, uh, increase. And from the page of the object, you can start the, uh, the submission of, of a document. Uh, this is um, again a, a new submission of a special special item that is of type document, and the um, the connect the relation between the the item and the and the object is uh, automatically done using the authority framework in the space Chris, and uh, also during submission the submitter can also uh, pick from uh, the researcher profiles some uh, person in order to give them uh, the permission to read and download those uh, those documents. At the end of the of the submission of this special type, these uh, of these special items is will be these items will be uh, visible into the uh, object page. With a specific component on the on the on the object page. Okay, we can go over. Okay. Uh, also, we had to uh, synchronize and uh, the information from the from the human resources database that is called Paris. I hope I pronounce it correctly. <laughs> and uh, Boris Portal. Uh, from Paris, we import the researcher, researcher's information, and the faculties and departments. In uh, the space Chris, they become researcher profiles and organi org organization units. Uh, this is done mainly using uh, ETL transformation that is done using uh, Pentau Suite. And uh, the, this ETL, Take the data from Paris and transform uh, those uh, this data in um, in the Excel format that is used by a standard input framework of uh, the space Chris five, and in this way we 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 import uh, and update every day the 
the information from the human resources database. The interesting thing here is that we, we, we saved the, the uh, unique ID from the human resources database that is called GUID uh, as the external ID of the researcher profile that in this space, Chris Gerbo is the source ID. And also we have configured the login that they use Shibolet for, um, to, to receive the GUID as the net ID of the person. So we have the, we have the, the profiles and, uh, we, and as soon as the, the user logs in via Shibolet, uh, 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 a post login action that is uh, 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 a class that, that is, a, is um, an, um, an action that is, that, uh, that is triggered as soon as the login is successful, tries to connect the researcher profile and the e person uh, using the net ID and the source ID of the, of the researcher profile. In this way, the, the, every user is automatically connected to, the, to this researcher profile without the need to search and uh, try to, uh, to connect or disturbing too much the administrator of the, of the repository. Uh, next, thank you. And uh, the last uh, issue, the requirement that we had is to, as Sumi mentioned, there is still uh, the Boris publication portal and that is based on ePrints. So we had to uh, connect the research data and the project to, uh, the, to the related publications. In, uh, in Boris publication. This, is, uh, this was done using a, a, a lookup on ePrints uh, during the, the submission of the, of the research data or the, the project. And uh, this lookup used the, again, the authority framework from uh, the space Chris and uh, you and uh, queries the, uh, the search endpoint of ePrints and uh, the ePrints the, the e um, gives uh, as a response a JSON that is in, uh, called in citation format. This means that the, 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 the data that, that we receive are a citation of the, of the publication uh, and the, obviously the ePrints ID. Uh, the iPrints ID is saved as authority of this, uh, of this metadata and obviously the citation is saved as a, as a value. So we use the iPrints the e ID to, to create a rendering to, to create a link to the actual publication. But obviously we are also preparing for the import as Sumi has mentioned preparing for the import in order to, to be able to recreate the connection easily between research data and its publication, project and, uh, and its publication. And um, uh, I think that it's uh, all for me. I hope I have not been too long. <laughs> and if you, if you have any question or Please, we are here. Perfect, thank you. We already have a question. The Creative Commons licenses for each bitstream, will this be made available for all DSpace Chris 5 users? Not for now, uh, because this, uh, actually this requirement came, uh, came, uh, it was, it was uh, came from uh, from University of Bern for the first time in uh, for us, and um, then uh, we we don't didn't have any um, many 
many re requests of this kind, but it, it, it's possibly be it can be ordered to the to the community code, obviously. Yeah, so I think there's interest, at least in the chat over here, um, to get this feature to DSpace Chris 5. Okay, any other questions? You can open your mic if you want to be recorded, if you're okay with that and ask directly, or you can type your questions into the Zoom chat. What's your approximate schedule for the DSpace 7 migration? Um, we are still in discussion about when exactly that would be. We have, at the moment, we have planned to first do the migration of Boris publications like this from ePrints to, to um, DSpace first, and then um do the migration to dspace 7 but it's everything is still in the in discussion work in progress so okay. it could be yes ricardo please yeah sorry J just to add that obviously we know that the migration will be done at some in the near future and uh, uh we uh, we uh, university of Bern and for science are working on this on Boris portal looking forward for the space for the space Chris 7 so we will not we every everything that we implemented for example the the the, sub, the submission of the of the Chris entities uh, is done looking for the uh, the space Chris 7 uh, submission that will let's say remove the difference between uh entities and items so this is the our we we are not still uh scheduling the the, the space Chris 7 but we are working uh with this uh with this vision let's say yeah great i don't see any other questions zumi ricardo thanks a lot for this great talk Thanks to you. And hope I hope we meet each other at the DSpace 7 Chris workshop later this afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye.